So we pick up the story in Jonah chapter 1 verse 4 and we're looking at Jonah's disobedient actions and how it affected not only him but those people around him. In this particular story we're looking at Jonah and the sailors that he's with and then God sends a violent storm to stop him in his tracks from running away. And this got me thinking we, we need to pay careful consideration to our own disobedience and the choices that we make because every choice carries a consequence every choice every decision not only to us but to those that are around us subsequently we also then read then as it moves on in chapter 1 verse 12 that Jonah asked the sailors to throw him overboard <laughs> and then by chapter 1 verse 15 they obliged because it got that crazy and this didn't wasn't the end of the story as we know this was just the beginning because then Jonah finds himself in a belly of a large fish um, and Jonah thought obviously this was going to be his death but God sent them an unlikely boat a rescue boat because God doesn't change his plans even when we change our minds So this rescue boat, <laughs> it was an unlikely rescue boat. It was an, actually, as we read in the text, it was a, a large whale, a large fish, a large sea animal of some description. And it's in this part near, in um, Jonah chapter 2 that we hear a real, honest, desperate, praying Jonah. I mean, he even details in here the seaweed around his head. And I just was thinking, it is amazing the details um, that you remember in your point of grief, in that point of um, calamity. You remember all sorts of strange things and that's documented here, the seaweed wrapped around his head. But it also prompted a really honest um, repentance, a really honest um, heart of gratitude from Jonah, a real honest humility. This is where the real Jonah came through when he was down on his leg, down on his knees, in a position of just no hope. We see the real deal, we see the real Jonah, and we hear his prayer. And I want to encourage each of us tonight that we don't just wait until our lives are um, maybe ebbing away, <laughs> as it said in the text with Jonah, as his life was ebbing away. We don't wait the same way that Jonah does before we put things right with God. If God has told us to do something, no matter how hard it is, I would just, I would just ask that you would just pray, and you would not allow um, pride and selfishness um, have the last word in your life. Just allow just the gratitude of how He has saved you to bring you to a place of repentance and a place of honest, humble obedience. Jonah chapter 3 starts with the word of the Lord came a second time and what I find mildly amusing about this it was the same word that Jonah had received in chapter 1 and what that says to me that God doesn't change his plans he just changes our minds about his plans our disobedience when it comes to against God's sovereignty doesn't change anything it was always going to be Jonah giving this message and it was always going to be Jonah going to give it to Nineveh it was always going to be this way and one of the things about Jonah being a prophet is that there's only one prophecy I guess in the whole text and it's found here in chapter 3 verse 4 um, and it says 40 more days and Nineveh will be overturned and this is the message that God gave him in chapter 1 to, to take which he refused and tried to run away and he's now back in the same position but now in front of the people given this, this message, 40 more days and Nineveh will be overturned. And then what happened? You'd think, well, that's not a lot. But what happened was, at once the people in Nineveh believed, they repented from top to the bottom, from the king to the cattle. They all covered themselves in sackcloth. They were remorseful and they wanted to turn to God and away from this sin. And I... I would love to have been there to see Jonah's face. Could you imagine his face? He obviously wasn't expecting 
this outcome. He thought, well, I'll be obedient, I'll do what you say, but surely this won't have the impact that, um, that you're saying it will have. So he just went and did it, but to his dismay, the people repented. And so all of that heartache, all that near death experience for a three second sentence. But that's the thing that we've got to remember. Words from the throne room have power. They have authority. They have supernatural power. And we just have to have the confidence sometimes to speak those things out and leave the results up to God. So we've now crashed through Jonah chapter four and we see a very angry and disgruntled and annoyed Jonah. In fact, he wants to die. Um, he does not want to share God with these heathen people, these people who are not like him and are not like his people. And my plea today to us as a people of God is that we will not be like Jonah that we won't be so precious about God, that we won't feel he's, he is exclusive to us, that, that in fact we see that God is for everybody and we actually believe it and we live that out. He is for everyone, no matter what age, what stage, what background. Um, he is absolutely 100% for everyone. And we are not to keep him precious and contained in a box. We are to share it and take it to the world and to tell people that their sins can be forgiven, that there is a God that loves them and is coming for them if they would only open their eyes and turn from their sins.